Hey, welcome back to Tim Talks. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we're going to talk again in the series of what to do on your first day of work or what not to do, actually. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today is lacking cohesive company culture. Now, when we talk about cohesion or cohesive, that means actually fitting in or actually working well together. Uh, if you look up in the dictionary, and uh, it says this, an incoherent talk or blog post is one that doesn't hang together. And if the police pick up someone who they describe as incoherent, that means that he or she isn't making sense. But to describe a group or team that always sticks together, that is cohesion. So that have, you have to work together with the team that you now are new with this company. You have to work together with them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So most human resources that were surveyed uh, showed that many people that started with a new company really didn't fit in or have that cohesion or, or work well with the company culture of their company. So they go on to say that only 2% of everybody in the company fit in with their company culture or, or work together with that company culture. And then it goes on to say while 56% said that half or less of current employees had the right attitude. And then finally it says 20% uh, of the companies have fully defined the attitudes unique to their company culture. So it shows that there needs to be a little more done to help everyone to fit in with that company culture. And if you're looking for the job and you are there now on your first day, you should have already done research on what that company culture is and how you can fit in with that company culture, how it's gonna, how you're gonna benefit the company with what you know and what you've learned to get into the company, get in with that new company. So part of the problem stems from the companies have not made that effort to let those new employees know what their company culture is or how it works. So a lot of that work might have to be done by you when you do your research in your research phase. A strong employer brand helps to organize and attract candidates to come to their company. And they, they look for them and they let them know what they expect from them and how they can fit in. They, they explain that to them. And they, that's where the cohesion comes in when those companies start to do that, when they explain what they're looking for and how it's going to fit in. So those hiring managers are looking how to explain how uh, employees with personal values or certain things that they're looking for uh, or for the, those employees that they want to hire, their growth. So they know what it is and what they've talked to them about during the interview phases. And so those employers should be able to explain what they need and how they, that new employee, can fit in with their company culture. That would be ideal. But this might all stem with you doing most of the research you finding out what needs to be done, you making sure you fit in to that company that you found. So that could be all on your shoulder. So remember that this can't be achieved with hard skills only. I mean, you may have the knowledge of what your job is and what it requires of you, but those soft skills play a huge part in how you're gonna uh, let them know that you do fit in. So again, your first day of work, what can hiring managers do? In a study of some 800 managers, they had significantly more hiring success than others. Why? Because they used an interview approach. While highly perceptive individuals can assess and evaluate a particular person's future performance based on what they talk about and what their skills are, most managers concentrate on what the hard skills are and what they see in the candidate because those are easy to evaluate. Those are easy to see but it, it does not really tell them how that candidate is gonna be in the future. It doesn't give them an accurate view based solely on hard skills. It's a poor predictor of that employee's success rate. So it's up to you. It's up to you as that, that candidate. You're going in, you're looking for the job. You have to show them that you have those soft skills that can make you last. Help them to evaluate you and help them to see what your potential is for the future. You have to have a positive attitude. A positive attitude plays a huge part in, in the success that you're going to bring to the table or that you're going to show them. Show them your soft skills in addition to your hard skills 
and that positive attitude is going to display who you really are. So the next time something goes wrong or it's not going the right way during an interview, think of these four things. Stay strong, stay positive, think I can do it and I can make it. So those little affirmations can help you a lot and they do work a lot of times, but it, it's not going to hurt to use them and say them. So always think about how you can have that positive attitude, not only during the interview part and letting them know who you are and what, what you're capable of, but also when you get the job, it's your first day at work, you got to have a positive attitude and you may not understand everything right at front, right? At first you, you're getting the new ideas of what's going to be done, how things are going to be run. You have to let them know that you're there, that you're willing to do whatever it is to make this work. So the important thing to remember is the positive attitude doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make you better at what you do. But people are going to view you differently and they're going to really appreciate the fact that you do have a positive attitude. So positivity creates more positivity. So if you're positive, those colleagues around you, they want to hang around you. They're going to like you. They're going to see what you, you're capable of and you're always positive. You're always upbeat. People love to hang around those kind of people. So that's something that's going to help you. So think about uh, negativity and positivity. What's the difference between the two? Well, a negative person can affect the whole staff. It can affect everybody in the company. Positive person has a has a great effect on everybody. If that if that employee with the bad attitude starts talking negatively, we have to try to stay away from that guy because because he can really create a toxic environment. So we don't want to be part of that, especially if we're new and that's and you start hearing about this one person in particular. So you can think of the difference of positive and negative. The positive will always progress forward and this negative will stay stagnant. So a positive attitude in the office is as easy as saying yes. Why? So by, by telling people to be positive and explaining how to be positive is a little easier said than done. And it's easier than getting people to actually do it. But that attitude, your attitude can show the difference. So you have to be the one that displays it through your words and actions. So again, smile. I talk about it almost all my videos about smiling and how that makes a huge difference. Smiles are, are, are in fact infectious. People love smiles. People start smiling if you smile or they want to know what you're up to or what you're doing when you smile. So smile is, is one of those positive aspects of being positive. So if you've made it this far and you're already at your new job, these are just some things that are going to help you. We appreciate you guys being here. Always be ready for your first day of work and always be positive. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, and we, you guys have a great day. Ciao, ciao.